a Wednesday, which I know is my day to upload a video, and I'd sort of forgotten about it. So we're going to do a bit of an impromptu session, come up with some questions. Tom's going to help, he's going to interview me. So currently I'm in Italy, uh, we're driving from down south in Bari, up to the north in Milan, but we've stopped off in uh, a local village where Tom's family live. I can't pronounce it. Castabrignano. That's the one. Uh, and we're now on our way to San Marino for a couple of days. We love life with the rich and famous that live there. What drew you to international teaching? Uh, so international teaching, uh, why would I want to go? Uh, I tried to get a job in Devon down in Plymouth where I had done my teacher training and it became very difficult. Uh, it was ridiculous uh, in Plymouth itself. We had one of the head teachers come in at one point and say that he had 90 people apply for one of his one teaching job. So I knew at that point it was going to be very difficult to get a job. Uh, I applied for six, seven jobs, had about six interviews. never got the job, all down to experience. So then I thought if I'm going to have to move, why move in England? Uh, you know, it's expensive. So I went and online, went onto the wonderful TES website and they have loads of international jobs. I applied for about five. I had loads of the schools get back to me. I had the choice of Kiev or Egypt. And I uh, chose Kiev, and it was really great fun. So why did you choose the places uh, and the school that you went to? Uh, so Kiev, uh, it's capital city. Uh, <coughs> so I thought that would be um, interesting. It's good to stay in the capital cities. You get a real feel of the country. And the problems that it has. Uh, Kiev obviously was just after their revolution. If you've not seen uh, the Winter on Fire documentary, I recommend it. It's very interesting. Um, and it was very interesting to see in Kiev actually how patriotic they all were. And uh, you get told off for speaking Russian, uh, not Ukrainian. <laughs> Where would you consider going? I've never really had many thoughts of where to go. Originally I thought I'd stay somewhere in Europe because it's close to family and they'll be happy that they can come see me and I can go home. The second school, I'm going to Venezuela. I really wanted to go to South America. Who wouldn't? And Is there anywhere you wouldn't go? Anywhere I wouldn't go. I, 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 there are a few places. Uh, the Middle East. But yeah, I feel that very good and I want to settle down I want to meet someone and I don't feel a country like that is ever going to give me the opportunity right now to meet someone and settle down. What are the pros of being an international teacher? Pros? Uh, I'd have to say I was quite impressed with the ability to do professional development. Uh, in my last school I had a budget and I could use that to do whatever I wanted. So I managed to do a couple of courses, which is the main thing that you need to be able to do when you're teaching is learn and develop. And I know my next school, they've said that whatever CPD I want to do, they will help fund it and pay for it and help me find something to do. So I think that's vitally important. Other pros, you get to meet so many amazing people um, from all over the world. And it just gives you so many more links around the world. I, you know, I now know people from Canada, America, Australia, New Zealand that I would never have met working in the UK. Same question, but what are the cons? Cons, you are away from your family, home comforts. Like me. Like Tom, best mate. Don't get to see him very much anymore. Don't get to go down the pub, have a few pints <laughs> and a chat. The occasional Skype conversation. Um, Definitely think one of the cons would be that, that you had some pretty nice beer in Kiev. One of the 
the cons. One of the, uh, no, one, one of the pros. pros. Pros, pros. There was a lot of nice beer in Kiev. I have to yeah. see what uh, Venezuela's like. What do you think uh, some of the uh, differences and similarities uh, of international teaching? Similarities, obviously, I've been in a British school and I'm going to a British school. Both of them loosely following, well, my next school is following quite heavily the British curriculum and the structure of teaching, uh, which I feel is is important, although, as we all know, some of it won't really work, such as history. I don't think Venezuelan children need to know about the history in UK. British history. Is British, British history in Venezuela? I think I'm going to be. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to find out. Oh, interesting. Um, uh, so that's similarities. I mean, it follows the curriculum. Same style of sort of planning. Although, it, just like in the UK, they're moving more and more towards cross-curricular, which is a, I find a really good way of teaching. The PYP is, the IB PYP is quite a cross-curricular way of teaching, although it's very tough. You have to put more legwork in to do the planning, but once you've done it, you can come up with some really amazing lessons in teaching and learning. Uh, the difference is, uh, I'd have to say sometimes there can be more support with your planning. I know in an IB PYP school you have your PYP coordinator, and I'm sure David will tell you a lot more about those, because that's what he's going to be doing. Uh, there's always people to help you, and I sort of feel that people are more willing. Uh, although I can't really compare it too much as I've not taught in UK schools. But Which means you're going to have to do it at some point, probably. Yeah. And after. But I've spoken to loads of friends in the UK, and some schools are very good at sharing things like planning, and some schools are quite strict on it. You have to do all your own planning. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, and then your last question is what is your fondest memory uh, over the last two years of teaching? Teaching. Um, I'd have to say one of the toughest topics that I've had is we've had a maps topic for the past two years in year one. It changed this year slightly, but the idea was learning all about towns and cities and the use of maps. And it was so hard and tough, but our final project was to create a city. And the children just got on really on board and you could just see that they're learning and what they had understood and taken on board, the different forms of transport, that before, at the beginning of the topic, they'd be like, ah, oh, they didn't even think about metros. A lot of these kids, obviously, uh, don't use the metro very often, if at all, so it just doesn't come into their mind uh, without teaching them that, yeah, actually people do use the metro, and it is an important part of the city. They would never have thought about it and put it in their own city. I'd like to have the fondest memories, you know, just seeing children that don't speak English at the beginning of the year, especially in year one, come with no English whatsoever. Uh, I had a boy this year and his English, <coughs> he'd never been in school and he just didn't want to be there at the beginning of the year. By the end of the year, I could have a basic conversation with him and he wanted to come to school and that's the best thing when you have children in your class that just want to come to school. Alright, I think that'll be it. Thank you very much. Tune in. Hopefully next week I'll upload a video of some of the things I've been up to. If not, it'll probably be uh, another video like this. Peace out.